Hey everyone, it's Andrew from Gemma Red, and today we're going to take a look at the really neat topic is avoiding some pitfalls when you're shopping around for red light therapy panels. Um, so kind of kind of the big basis for this is that there are a lot of um, alternative suppliers, alternative uh, places you can get it. You can shop on Amazon for red lights, you can go to eBay, you can go to different places. There's new competitors popping up all the time. But unless these competitors are really taking the time to do their due diligence, to source the right components, um, the products can look very similar from the outside, but you know, the performance might be very different. You know, in, in particular, you could look at the, um, the EMF readings from them, like how much electromagnetic fields you can get out of them, and uh, the flicker rating might be different. So all these things that you can't physically see by eye and a lot of companies you know uh, you know don't really care to disclose it they might not even know how to test it or they might not understand how important some of these factors are uh, so you want to want to make sure you source you know you buy your your red light therapy from a company that gets professional measurements gets the right stuff i've talked about in some previous measure in some previous posts and uh youtubes how i don't like this um uh, 10 Mars solar power meter, and I think it reads a little bit high. Um, you know, I think that's another issue with the red light therapy industry too. And I think, uh, you know, watching out for EMFs and making sure people are measuring and disclosing and trying to make the best possible product out there. And that's what, you know, that's what I always try to do and uh, I set my standards very high. Um, so we've got this one panel over here. It looks kind of like a Gemba Red Rex. It's got a silver casing and a similar kind of pattern to it, but actually this one's only got two wavelengths on it. It's a 660, 850. Uh, it's kind of a generic brand. Um, you know, I was shopping around and uh, this, this company was like, hey, we can we can sell you cheaper cheaper panels. And I was like, well, I already have a great panel and I, you know, I'd have to work with you on making sure it's up to snuff on EMFs and things like that. And, uh, you know, you know, that's the first thing, first struggle I, I had with my own panels was that I noticed high EMF readings, particularly on the uh, electric fields. And uh, I went in and I worked with some electrical technicians and engineers and uh, we redesigned and added an EMF mitigation technique to it. So you can see the generic brand um, has this problem. So I put it on, I've got my electric field meter I've used before on uh, the Gigahertz ME3030B and I'll bring it right up to the panel and uh, you can definitely hear it clicking like crazy and I've gotten up to like around 600 to 700 oh now it's reading 800 um, we'll see maybe we'll center all this and maybe you'll get a, a view of it so I'm not sure what you can see but it's showing me about 800, uh, 830, and it's clicking, you know, it's clicking like crazy, so um, that's not great. And then we can compare it to, because a lot of times these numbers still don't mean a lot to people, like they don't mean, like if you say 800 or 100, like what's the difference? Um, and what's the threshold of like danger versus no danger, like I don't think there's very good guidelines here. I'm putting it up to my groove. And here there's a lot less clicking, and right now it's telling me, what's it, 50? I mean, and we're pretty, like, we're almost touching. And so we're reading 50. We'll put, move it around. Yeah, we're reading around 50 just on the group panel. So, I mean, that's, that's a huge difference between over 800 on the generic brand and 50 on the uh, Kemba Red Groove. Um, so that's... Yeah, you can hear it. But, you know, that's easily solved because, like I said, I solved it and I think people are reverse engineering my panel and uh, figuring out my EMS solution. It's actually, it took me a lot of time and money to figure it out, but once I figured it out, it was actually relatively straightforward. Um, so, we're going to take a look at it. So, I have this panel open, and what I told this supplier, I was like, well, Here's the, here's the thing, I, already, I gave them my secret. I said, all you have to do is make sure you use your ground wire. If you're, if you're buying a, you know, one of these cheap panels online, 
make sure it's a three prong light. I've seen some of the ones on Amazon are only two prong. That means it's not grounded and you can never ground it. If you get a three prong, there's a chance that it could be grounded already or you can ground it yourself with a simple uh, grounding strap. So you can see here from the middle wire, it's the one with the yellow on it, that's the grounding wire. So we'll keep it unplugged so I don't electrocute myself. So this is the grounding wire and I obviously I detached it. Um, and this, you know, this is what happens is that companies don't attach the ground to uh, this metal plate here. So once you attach this ground, something cool will happen. And it won't be me getting electrocuted. Okay, so that's my uh, EMF secret so people can stop um, reverse engineering my panel. Uh, you can just view this, this uh, video. Um, get the ground wire. Just get one grounding strap. If you, again, if you bought a panel and it happens to have high EMF, it's got that third prong, you can get someone who's electrically savvy and maybe they can help you ground, ground the panel and reduce that. So I added the ground wire, did this. Um, you know, this video I'm doing all in real time, so there's no, uh, you know, movie magic or whatever. And uh, let's plug it in. Everything's de-energized still, so you want to be safe when you're doing this. Alright, so I think I'm plugged back in, and we're going to try the electric field again. So, it turns back on like normal, so that's good. I didn't, you know, that little modification didn't change anything. And then we're going to go and bring it right up. And uh, it's no clicking. All right, the clicking didn't increase. I don't know what you can read off of this on the uh, on the video. And now the cord's in the way, so that's great. So what are we reading? Fifty, you know, fifty-four. And like I said, I did it in front of your eyes. Just reattach that grounding strap. Um, to the metal plate in the back, and you're good to go. You've mitigated the electric field, and that's awesome, right? Um, so, you know, so now it kind of matches what we saw with my groove panel, so you can do that. Um, and hopefully people can uh, now use this information, use it freely, and, uh, and do what they want to do, or continue to support me and know that, you know, I do, do high-quality work. So the other thing is uh, this supplier had reached out to me, so this supplier had reached out to me and they said, Andrew, we, you know, we want to sell you our lights. And I was like, all right, well, make sure you ground, ground the panel. And they did that. And I was like, well, I see who you're selling. You know, I, I think I know who you're selling to. And uh, I see a lot of flicker and when they post about it on, on their websites and you can see kind of the streak marks and you can see some kind of, some of the waviness if you take a video with it. Um, you don't even need a slow motion video. I, put some tips on my blog post on Flickr on how you can spot, you can spot, you know, if, especially if it's flickering a lot, you can spot it if you take a still image and there's kind of like these black kind of streaks along the image, or if you're taking a normal video, you kind of see some like waviness through. You don't see that full flicker. So anyways, I was like, no, you know, I'm not going to buy from you because I think your, your panel flickers. And uh, so, so they were like, okay. Um, recently they reached out to me and they go, Andrew, we're using a new power driver. There's no flicker. We fixed the flicker problem. I was like, wow, that's great. I like your enthusiasm. I like your effort. I'm going to try your panel. So I got this one. And uh, obviously they grounded it out. They got this bulky, big uh, power driver that uh, has no flicker. I checked it out on uh, you know, slow motion. It's, it's pretty steady, pretty nice. Uh, obviously, I've already measured out my panels to have pretty low flicker as well. Um, so I did a quick check with this just with a slow motion camera. There's no flicker. I was like, that's great. So there's two things down. We fixed the electrical field and we fixed the flicker. Now let's check it again. And, uh, you know, I fully check out 
lights when I'm when I'm evaluating them. So I was like, well, I'll check the magnetic field. If you look at you know one of our last videos, we check the magnetic field on both the Rex and the Groove, and uh, get like practically nothing. We get like 0.1. There's no magnetic field. I think it's just because it's kind of a lower power light. Um, you can see magnetic field. It jumps up when I move around, so I don't know what's going on. But if I leave it still, magnetic field reads 0.2 milligauss or 20 nanotesla. Um, so right, that's like nothing. That's like pretty much noise. Um, so we got 0.2. Let's go back to this one and try to measure it right where their fancy new power driver is. So I'm going to place this right in front of their new fancy new power driver. And my magnetic field, you can hear it, it's clicking so fast it sounds like a constant like buzz. Yeah. Uh, what's the number? I don't know. Oh, it's maxed out. So it's maxed out. And I think this maxes out at 2000 nano tesla which is um, 20 milligauss so 20 milligauss and this is maxed out so it could be higher um, let's add a little bit of space so like you know two inches away we're at 10 milligauss or a thousand nano tesla so 10 milligauss at <laughs> two inches away and again these panels are supposed to be used pretty you know pretty close so you can get that light effectiveness right and you're hugging, now you're going to hug something that's got, you know, over 20 milligauss of magnetic field, which I'm usually a little bit more concerned about milligauss than I am with electric field, because milligauss, there's some real kind of OSHA standards and um, international standards on staying kind of low on milligauss. With electric fields, um, you know, there's not as good kind of documentation on electric fields. So anyway, so we... <laughs> So I gotta turn this off, it's too loud. So anyway, we fixed the electric field, fixed the flicker, and now these guys have created a magnetic field issue. And uh, again, that's why you gotta keep digging, you gotta retest, you know, every time you change a component, retest everything, you know, and keep going. And it's this long cycle of testing, changing things, retesting, and you know, I'm going through that with a lot of my different lights and uh, trying to bring to the market the absolute best products. And then I see some stuff like this that you think, oh, I'm gonna get a good deal, buy something cheap off of Amazon. I don't know why people are getting health products off of Amazon, but uh, you know, generic brands of things. And then, uh, you know, might not get a great result. So again, you know, three big things to look for that are, you know, invisible are, you know, the EMFs, the electric field, magnetic field, and flicker. And uh, they're invisible, it's hard to tell, unless, uh, you know, you get a professional kind of measurement and you, you really stay diligent with it. So, I hope that helps. Uh, it's, it's definitely, like, really illuminating to me that simply swapping a power driver. Um, I did that with my LED headband when I talk about my Gemba Red Wheel. All I did was swap the power driver and it reduced the electric field on my headband. And so I made a headband and the electric field drops to nothing when I, all I have to do is change the power adapter. And same thing here. There's a power adapter internal to these panels and that's how they run. And they determine a lot of the EMF status. They determine your flicker. Uh, they're super important. So that's why it's, you can't just look at the outside, you can't just look at the LED bulbs. It's really what's, what's on the inside that matters. And, uh, you know, you need someone who's cognizant of, of, you know, quality and what to look for. Um, so hopefully that helps. It's, uh, you know, again, uh, I think that should help a lot of people who, who are currently stuck with uh, panels like this and uh, will help them kind of shop around and find what's right for them. So, thank you.